Hi everyone, it's Alfred. Welcome back to Kojima Evolving. Um, I don't know if I read this combat description, which I'm going to now. You're fighting the big wheelin' twins. Around a corner in the topiary area maze and see two hugely fat children riding low-slung tricycles with oversized front wheels. They're both out of breath and shining with sweat. We're not out of we're not fat, we're baked bone, they say in unison, and yes, we're reading your mind. We're not sweaty, we have the glistening, and yes, we are about to run you over with our bikes. Thanks for thinking it. You release the void, and it flies around your opponent, leaving the pool of oil behind. They slip and get hurt and are two days to attack. Alright. 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 I learned that there's a thing that can happen here. Well, we got him. See, so yeah, there's a thing that can happen. It's a 15% chance. Uh, dang. All right. Well. Fancy on the music. Examine the painting. Huh. Okay. Well, let's, uh, oh, cabin fever. Here we go. Find yourself back in the Great Overlook Lodge and heave a tired sigh. How many times have you been wandering around in this place? It seems like you've been down every quarter and through every room dozens of times. Well, I have. How long has it been since you actually slept? Your eyes feel like you've been rubbing the sandpaper and you think something is threatening to hatch out of your skull. It's no wonder what with the fashion point hallways and optical illusion carpets. You desperately want a cup of coffee. You desperately want a glass of bourbon. You desperately want to get out of this place. So a path is formed by laying one stone at a time or burn this mother goddamning hotel to the ground. Well, this one allows us to do the side quest, which I don't care about. I'm going to do this. Unexpectedly, you wake up in your bed in the Great Overlook Lodge. You aren't sure what to make of this. How much of what happened has been a dream? Your head hurts, but you're not sure if it's because of your earlier injury or because you're having a migraine. You hop out of the bed and shovel to the bathroom to brush your teeth. Blarily, you pick up your toothbrush and unscrew the top of the toothpaste tube. Then squeeze the entire tube of toothpaste into the sink, swirling it around in fascinating patterns of lines and globs like a zen garden. You start to laugh and catch sight of your reflection in the mirror. Angrily, you rear back and smash your head on the glass as hard as you can. The caretaker's reflection is warped by a spiderweb of cracks in the mirror's surface, but there's no mistake in those wild eyes, the unshaven face, the giant, manic, leering grin. The two of you begin to laugh. Here's Johnny. You cackle manly as blood trickles, trickles down from your forehead into your eyes. Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. You laugh some more. Here's Johnny. And then mercifully, the hotel explodes. You wake up again in your campsite. You no longer have the faintest idea of what's going on, and you firmly resolve to not investigate further or indeed to care, which I don't. Cool. They're all lit. All right. Oh, sweet, dude. You totally let all the missed signal fires. Didn't have to collect any rent from my tenants while you're out there, did you? I oh, know worries. It's enough that you, like, lit the fires. <coughs> Sorry. The voice is rather grating. It's enough you lit the fire so I can get my pizza. I was, like, getting desperate, you know? I already ate all my Cheetos and, like, five bowls of cereal. Yeah, hey, that's me. Hey, you got a back, right? I mean, like most people do. As a thanks for helping me out, you can have this. I'm too busy staring at my hands to put stuff on my back anyway. You know what else likes pizza? The Baron and Rothlam Fowl. Used to be a nice place, but it got overrun by the harshest group of buzz kills I've ever seen, man. They got, like, a whole different alphabet. Anyway, help him out. I'm sure he'll reward you. Jeez. Got a whole nother quest? Lit all those fires, keeps us warm. All right, cool. Let's go to my equipment and take a look. Misty cloak. Oh, it's a back item. I've never gotten one of those. More muscle and regenerate health per adventure. This is a cloak made out of some of the Highland Lords Highland Mist. It's light but strong, just like you like your women. I don't know about that, buddy. The health regeneration is pretty sweet, though. All right. Now what? Oh, yeah, White Citadel. They aren't blind. They're just wearing shades. Over a hill from Whitey's Grove, you encounter two guys in matching suits and sunglasses. Laying against an old police cruiser parked on the side of the road. The taller one is practicing a blues riff on his harmonica, and the fatter one is lighting a cigarette. Excuse me, you say as you approach them. Are you the police? The fat one takes a drag on a cigarette, looks you up and down, and shakes his head. No, sir, we're musicians. Oh, well, maybe you can tell me. Is this the road to White Castle? White Citadel, I mean. Are you on a mission from God, too? You think back to the guy from your guild. I'm on a mission, but I sure as hope, sure as hell hope the guy who gave it to me doesn't turn out to be God. Yikes. Well, you're on the right track. White Citadel is a couple miles that way. Just down the road with your thumb. 
Tall one lowers his harmonica, says, don't leave the path, and resumes playing. The fat one nods. Yes, yeah, stick to the road. Lots of stuff, bad stuff happens in these woods. Like what? You ask. Cops? Nazis? ex fiancés Worse. Wow. Okay, thanks for the warning. You give him a wave and start down the road. About 10 yards, you take a sharp turn and step directly off the road into the woods. I mean, when someone gives you a warning like that, it's bound to happen eventually. Might as well get it over with right away. It's a reference to the Blues Brothers, by the way. Hope you've seen it. It's a good movie. <laughs> you wander out of the woods into a large grassy clearing filled with bright red wildflowers. As you walk through them, they release a cloud of pollen, making you sneeze, and the colors suddenly look way brighter. Oh, great. You mutter in a thick voice, poppies, poppies, poppies. You stumble forward into days and discover the field is full of people. Pairs of people, unless your vision is doubling. They each seem to be engaged in witty banter or arguments about where they're traveling to, though none of them seem to be concerned about getting to wherever that is because they're all deeply in intoxicated from the poppies. Oddly, none of them seem particularly perturbed by this. In fact, they look like they all pra look practiced, even dedicated burnouts. Is this some requirement for two guys on a road trip? Oh, this is a whole thing to Harold. This quest is a whole reference to Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, isn't it? Considering how many of them there are and how you're stumbling around and how they're stumbling around and getting in your way, albeit not intentionally, it's going to take forever for you to get to the other side of the clearing without using a little judicious use of force. Ordinarily, you'd hate the thought of going into a fight when you're this messed up, but considering how messed up the burnouts are, maybe it'll cancel out and put you on even footing fighting a pair of burnouts pretty typical story two friends get deported to mexico and in their efforts to get back in time for the battle of the bands they fail to realize the fan they've borrowed is made entirely out of weed happens to us all at one time or another right although they managed to get through without peeing on a cop's leg you get the jump on them uh another pair of burnouts these two guys want to get to the white citadel like you but a famous child doctor stole their car and after a ride on a stone cheetah and a puzzling animated sequence they ended up here in this field of intoxicating poppies blocking your path shame you're gonna have to beat them up to get by but in the end the universe tends to unfold as it should these heterosexual life partners seem to be asking you for directions but the thin one can't stop his foul mouth ranting for long enough to express the quench question the foul one seems to have given up on ever getting a word in edgewise they seem to have ditched the orangutan somewhat. Those things can rip off your skin like a banana peel if they get wild up, or spend a day hitchhiking with these two guys. And spending a day hitchhiking with these two guys is enough to make anyone see red. It's one of those things where it's like, hey, have you seen this movie? I hope you have, because every joke is based around it. Fighting two motorcyclists, one with a flag on his jacket, the other dressed in primitive-style buckskins, who are out searching for freedom in the Lothaginian dream. They seem like decent guys, and it's a shame you got to pummel them senseless, but maybe this is the way they'll miss their appointment with that pickup truck. Get the jump on them. We got a poppy. Ooh. I wonder. I'm so full, right? Yep. Poppy. It's soporific. Regenerate MP per adventure. But our poppy has an intoxicating sweet sense that, uh, <laughs> what were we talking about? Nice. 26 pairs of burnouts do they all have different words this thin tightly wound man in a hawaiian shirt and aviator sunglasses and his large swarthy simone attorney seem to be a bit confused as to what you're doing here but they're rolling with the punches admirably despite what god has done to them taking a hell of a detour from their intended destination but that's how it goes once you get locked into a serious road trip the tendency is to push it as far as you can we got two poppies okay this is the same all right well maybe i'll uh, do this learner we also still got this quest to do, the Black Forest quest. I can also just come back and do that on my off time, which is perfectly, perfectly, perfectly valid. Uh, but yeah, let's dive into the Black Forest. 40 Shades of Black. Oh, boy. As you run a bend in a path, you come across a strange man, a man dressed in all black clothes, wearing a black hat and carrying a black guitar case. Excuse me, you say. I'm looking for the black. I know what you seek says the man in black. And sure as night is dark and day is light, this will lead you to it. He hands you a map. This map is blank, you protest. Sure this isn't a map to the blank market? The man in black chuckles. Keep your eyes wide open all the time, he continues. But the path is fraught with peril. You can't reach the black market by walking the line. You must go there as the crow flies. Crow flies? What does that mean? You ask, but it's too late. He's already vanished. Blank map is no better than map at all if you pretend it is. Let's take a look at that. Actually, how good are these? 
Black map. Black on black map of the Black Forest. It's a quest item. Okay. Now, what the hell? I was just looking at... Okay. Giant motorcycle boots. 10 damage plus ghosts and motors and muscle. That's pretty good. This is a, this is a pair of boots that a giant... Well, a giant human, not like the giant giants in the castle in the sky, would wear to a motorcycle. Presumably on a giant motorcycle because a giant on a normal-sized motorcycle would look pretty silly. You know, like the kids these days riding around on their weird scaled-down version of street bikes with their knees sticking out under their elbows. Anyway, if anyone says they need your clothes, these and your motorcycle, just give them over to him. It's not worth dying over, man. Nice. What's this do? Spooky resistance. Okay, well. What, do I have, what have I got on now? Plus three to whatever. Oh, you know what? I do want more muscle. Besides, being able to kill ghosts is pretty efficient. Uh, efficient. Black Forest. You're fighting a Black Friar. Oh, that's funny. While circling the central district of the Black Forest, you encounter a rather metropolitan-looking friar, dressed in the severe black robes of the northern sex. The sight of you doesn't prompt him to throw a jubilee in your honor. In fact, he looks like he's rather hammersmith you right back to the city. This is a fine Piccadilly you find yourself in, Bakerloo. This is probably a reference to a band I don't get. Probably named the Black Friars or something. Uh, he gives you a swift kick in the mid-shoot. Let's just bonk. All right. You see a little guy sitting on a black rug, dealing a hand of blackjack. You leave quickly when you see the blackjack sitting beside him before he has a chance to hit you with it. A Mornington Crescent roll. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Handbaked by Mrs. Trellis of North Wales, this croissant nine reminds me of my youth in the little town of Taylorsbrook. Now we all rushed into the garden where the town crier announced that the baker's daughter, Samantha, was selling her goodies for only six pence a roll. What does it taste like? Well, I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. You're fighting a black widow. Ugh. It still made it look really creepy. As you pass through the black forest, you suddenly find your foot stuck in a thick, sticky spider web. As you struggle to free yourself, you hear a noise behind you that sounds like weeping. You hurl to face a giant black widow. A hideous monstrosity of a spider who hasn't been the same since her husband was killed by a giant exterminator. <laughs> That's funny. Oh dear. She bites you on the shoulder, and then some of her tears run into the wound. Salty. You're poisoned by the attack. Really quite poisoned for ten adventurers. Oh dear. Who oh boy. Are you poisoned? Are you ever? I mean, you're starting to think, maybe someone should just put me out of my misery so I don't have to deal with my liquefied internal organs shooting out next time I take a dump. That's how bad you're poisoned. All attributes minus 70% and minus 9. That's not good. All right. We reduced her defense by 15. We got a black pension jack. You see a black hole in the ground, but it's not a particularly interesting black hole. So you don't bother marking its location on your black map. Okay. We've got a black pension check. This is a black this is a check planted in black black ink on black paper. It's hard to tell who it's written out to or how much it's for, but maybe you could use that to your advantage. You take the black pension check down to a check cashing store. Seems like there's one of those things on every corner these days, and toss it on the counter. Clerk squints at you, eyes the check suspiciously, comes to the conclusion they don't pay him enough to care, and forks over some meat. I like that. All right. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I uh, totally forgot what that actually is. Oh, yeah, then there's this thing. I'm not going to go there yet. Let's actually go to here. Oh, yeah. I still haven't gone to the sky, have I? Well, hmm, 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 okay, yeah, I just want to get my, actually, I could just go here, yeah, why not, burn 10 adventurers in exchange for not being poisoned, um, and then I guess I'll just drink, Drink it back up. Three drunk. 
All right, cool. And then I'll just hold on to that. You're finding a black magic woman. This is a woman who has delved deep into the mag- dark arts. Her heart wasn't sufficiently dark to turn her into a full-fledged sorceress, but she's still got some powerful st- spells up her ebony sleeves. Black magic women are similar to witchy women, but they can't fly as high, nor do they have the moon in their eyes. We stun her. Oh, we drop our giant safety pin on our leg. Oop. Throw smack. Find a black flag pl- planted in the ground. This must be the site of some historic anti-surrender. Oh, that's... <laughs> okay, that's both funny and kind of dope. Could you imagine if you said anti-surrender by putting a black flag down? Okay, that's unironically pretty awesome. Black eye shadow. Black eyes, 10 adventurous. Spell damage plus 15%. This is a little plastic compact of a dark, dark eye shadow. Why do, this, why do they call this thing a compact anyway? It's just picking an arbitrary adjective that, destri- that describes it, not using it in its name. Why not call it a hard, or a plastic, or an expensive, or a clicky noise making? <laughs> nice. Back to this. You're fighting a black panther. As you're passing beneath some low-hanging branches in the black forest, you hear the sound of a twig snapping, followed by a low, angry growl. You turn to find the source of the growl. You see a small black badger beating its tail against the ground and snarling at you with malice in its beady little badger eyes. As you walk towards the badger to punt it out of your way, it's pounced on by a giant black panther. The panther devours the badger in a single bite, and it turns to face you. Ooh, boy. It raises its paw in a gesture of solidarity and then uses it to punch you in the elbow. You find a row of black... Okay, we, well, we defeated it. Cool. You find a row of blackberry bushes so thick you can't see what's on the other side. It's probably more blackberries, but just in case, you mark it on your map. Broken wings and black number two. Okay. This thing is a... Come on. This is a bottle of black, 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 number two hair dye. You're kidding. Who would have guessed the Black Panther wasn't naturally black? You can use this to gussy yourself up if you got a date with with Nosferatu. The stark contrast of your jet black hair and your milk white neck will make for an erotic funeral indeed. Uh, Looks Locks like the raven. Gives you 15 moxie and then broken wings. pair of broken wings you found in the guts of a Black Panther. Looks like whatever this panther ate is going to need to learn to fly again and live to live so free. Oh, boy. I wonder what I do with that. Hey, may as well just cheat. Broken wings. Uses reassembled blackbird. Oh, man. Sunken eyes. Do I have any sunken eyes? All right. Guess I'll keep adventuring. You find a moment of peace in the Black Forest and pause to examine your map. This seems like a good opportunity to check out one of the places you discovered earlier. Points of interest like the Blackberry Patch. You find your thrill. Well, it was once a tiny hedgerow next to a hedgerow next to a cobbler's house. There's now a riot of blackberry bushes. Literally, like, some of those bushes seem really, really angry. Fortunately, what was once a cobbler's house is still a cobbler's house. So if you're in the mood for something quieter than riot, you're covered. Let's fight. A regular blackberry bush is one of the most vicious things nature has to offer. It's all sharp thorns and rigid whip-like stalks and tangly brambles. Now imagine if one came to life. Actually, you don't have to imagine it because it happened right in front of you. Oh, it only did four damage. Cool. Another Black Panther. It wanders over to a nearby sunbeam and falls asleep. You spend a few moments composing a brief poem about sleeping cats, much to the panther's chagrin. That's either a reference to Kevin and Hobbes or William Blake. Hell yeah, William Blake. See a record that's black on both sides sitting next to a black record player. You put it on and enjoy the sounds of blackness for a few minutes before moving on. Let's go to the blackberry patch again and visit the house. You step inside the cobbler's house to find a short man in a black hat working on a sweet-smelling shoe with a variety of tiny, adorable tools. Hello, he says as he notices you. I'm the blackberry cobbler. I make shoes out of blackberries. Three berries should be enough for a pair. Would you like me to make you anything? Well, would you? You don't have any blackberries. We could have him make up slippers, moccasins, combat boots, or galoshes. Let's leave. Let's head toward the patch. Let's go to the buzzing sound. Oh, okay. 
you head towards a buzzing, the buzzing, and end up in a swarm of angry bees, which is not totally unexpected, right? Like, what else buzzes in a forest? A bee flies in your ear and stings you in the brain. A bee stings you in the legs. A bee stings you in the eye. The eye, the nerve of that little bastard. A bee stings you in the calf. Three bees sting you in the stomach, the ear, and the shoulder at the same time. Ow, ow, ow. The bees continue to swarm around you. The buzzing is louder. You must be getting closer to the hive. Either that or there's a bee in your ear. Ugh, that's happened to me. I had a hornet stuck to my ear for a little bit. Or both, I guess. With all this pain, it's hard to tell what's going on. Let's keep going. You continue on in spite of the swarming black bees. I get stung in the knee, the crotch, and the back. Ouch. You can see the hive. It's right in front of you. Almost there. You continue on in spite of the swarming bees. I get stung in the armpit, the lips, the cheek, the brain again, the tongue. You reach inside the hive, tell the bees inside it to calm down and detach it from the tree. Another black, a black adder. Take heed of the moral of this tale. Once there was an adventurer wandering around in the black forest, was suddenly attacked by a black adder. The adventurer in that tale is actually you, and the black adder is the black adder that's out of the underbrush and is attacking you right now. This is a reference to the show Black Adder, by the way. It bites you in the leg. The pain is very bad indeed. See a blackboard hanging off the tree, hanging off a tree with a side of chalk beside it. You try to draw some crude graffiti, but the chalk's black too, so you don't get a good picture. Uh, beehive. It's full of bees. This is a hive filled with angry but currently sleeping bees. It must be popular, generating a whole lot of buzz. Oh, whatever. <sighs> Back to the black forest. Another black widow. Not taking any chances. Uh, another black pension check. <laughs> you find a pool with thick tar with a flock of gross birds bathing in it. They must be black tar herons. That's so stupid. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's attack the bushes again. Oopsie in the head with a thorny tendril. We got one blackberry. You find a cozy black cottage nestled deep in the forest. From the smoke and anvil noises, you conclude it's probably the f either a blacksmith cottage or an anvil testing facility with liberal workplace smoking rules. Assuming it's a four, you mark its location on the black map. Another black friar. See a black tie hanging on a tree in front of you. Try it on, but it's too formal for you. Let's go to the blacksmith's cottage. You enter the small squat building and see a squat black man sitting on a squat black stool in front of a squat black forge, burning with squat black flames. You squat next to him as he addresses you. You want anything blacksmithed? He asks. Uh, what sort of things can you smith? Pretty much anything black. The fire is weird. How about a sword? A shield? A helmet? Or a pan? Ooh. I can do that, says the blacksmith. And I obviously can, because he does. Black sword. Black swords are the coolest type. It's a known fact. Black sword. Twelve. Oh, man. Well, it's already better. Okay. <laughs> this is a sword once wielded by the fierce black knight. Damn, Gina, this sword is so sharp. Uh, More weapon damage, more critical hit. And this one just weakens enemies, right? Plus ten weapon damage. Well, that's okay. Now the black magic woman. She turns your heart into stone. It's surprisingly painful. See a bunch of black straps hanging off a tree in front of you. They look like they make good suspenders, but when you touch one, it's all sticky. They're made of molasses. Gross. We got a little black book. You see a dude sunbathing with a black bar hovering between you and his crotchal region. You're incredibly grateful for that black bar. <laughs> Find a black top sitting on the ground, but you're concerned it won't match your shoes, so you leave it where it is. Yeah, we got an adder bladder and sunken eyes. In a secluded valley, surrounded by towering black trees, you spot a mine shaft sunk deep into the black depths of the earth. You mark its location on your black map. Right, let's go craft. Let me see here. It's the sunken eyes. Oh, broken wings. Here they are. We reassembled a blackbird. 
This is a blackboard that's been reassembled from various parts. You're not sure what's the worst fate, ending up as this hideous half-formed parody of life, or being baked into a pie with four 19-year buddies. That's funny. Oh, boy. All right. Let's cash that in. The Adder Bladder. What does that do? Deadly Flashing Blade. Ten Adventures. This is the glen in which black adders keep their venom. Some of you may say that these things are called sacks, but that's funny because you don't understand how much funnier things are if you if they rhyme. And let's put this in the terrarium. Put the reassembled blackbird in its in your grow terrarium. It seems to have been waiting for this moment to arrive, so it quickly learns to see, learns to fly, and starts singing. You name him Bodeus. Let's take him with us. He knows the way. What does that do? Speeds up exploration in the Black Forest. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Cool. That's pretty much all I needed. All right. Um... I'll be back in the next episode. I'm going to cut this episode here. I have an Alfred. This has been Kimo Loathing. Play this game for yourself. And remember to take care of yourself. I'm uh, I keep uh, not ending these very well. Whoops. Anyway, see you guys next time.